Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. How many podcasts have you done? Yeah, not not that many, so I should remember. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You're a real, you're yeah. real noob. Fucking uh, up. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hello. My name Hi. is David Bell. I am Adam Todd Brown. And we just watched Long, long legs. legs. It's uh, He's got the long legs. It's a movie about some legs that are he's longer got, than usual legs. Yeah, they're so long. So fucking long. The longest. I was like, this man, is, those legs? Long. I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. With seven heads and ten horns. On his horns, he wore ten crowns. On each head was written a blasphemous name. What aren't you telling me? He'll kill and kill again. This has been so so very hyped. Uh, This is a long time coming. Yes. Uh, Everybody sort of knows the... um, the, the the many many cryptic trailers of this movie. Oh, Adam, hold yeah. on. I'm just I'm really excited to talk about Long Legs, but thank you so much for being on. Oh, hey, for, of course. For, as as my guest co-host, that's huge. And yeah. uh, I guess at the start of this, is there anything you want to tell everybody? Everything you want to plug? Uh, what do you got going on? Um, I don't know. I got a lot going on, but I just launched a solo podcast at adamtoddbrown.substack.com called In Broad Daylight. You could go listen to that if you want. Whoa. Yeah. How do you, I think I've asked you this question before because you are one of the few people brave enough to do a solo podcast. Do you not have guests or do you? No. It's just you? No guests, just me. I, uh, I kind of write out what I'm going to talk about ahead of time. So I'm not like struggling to remember all the cool stuff I thought of going in. Right. It's been a lot of fun. I've, super easy to schedule just oh can yeah, do them you're right. pretty much whenever i want it's great that's that's great yeah i want to do i'm gonna do a one person podcast where i just don't know what to say the whole time <laughs> and it's a lot of dead air and me going like um the editing's very uh, easy when it's just one person i like that. oh yeah yeah that, that does sound real chill that yeah. doesn't real chill if you if you're able to have a like a solo podcast uh Man, that's that's a solid gig. Solid yeah, I'm, gig. I'm Where was that starts, again? Hoping it starts thriving. Yeah. It's at adamtoddbrown.substack.com, or you can find it on YouTube at Adam Todd Brown Comedy. All right. On, on YouTube, Everybody, there's video and there's pictures that pop up and things. That's that cool. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a video essay. It's like a video, like a vesse, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, one of them vesses. <laughs> We're not calling um, them that yet because we will soon. Don't worry. We will. We will. Don't worry. All right. Long legs. It Long is legs. Yeah. It, huge hype. I saw people tweeting like, man, I hope it lives up to that hype. <laughs> uh, it's directed by Oz Perkins, uh, Oz- Ozymandias Perkins. Um, I loved the Black Coat's daughter, so I was very excited for Long Legs. I, re- I saw that and I am the pretty thing that lives in the house. Yep. I love his vibe. Um, he is, of course, Anthony Perkins' son. So he's he's got a little bit of a background in horror. Uh, and, like, I, I really like his vibe. I got to say, I need to rewatch Black Hood's Daughter because I watched it when I was really sleep deprived. And the one mm. thing about those movies is they're pretty, like, I don't even want to call them slow. More like atmospheric or, like, slow burns, I guess. Yeah. I would this say is, the same. I would say the same thing about long legs. Oh, I was going to say this is not a slow burn to me, oh. but you're right. It technically is. Um, this is all to say that I really liked both of his films, 
but they didn't click with me too, too much. How did you like Long Legs? I thought it was good. I don't think it lived up to all of the hype. I think without all of the build up to it, I might have liked it better. Okay. My one of my big gripes with it, the lead actress, I like her as an actor, but this character was bad. Micah Monroe, who, you know, she just she's does horror. She does pretty much horror and that Independence Day resurgence. Um, yeah, which is yeah. like a horror. She is playing a character who is, she's like doing this thing where she's almost emotionless, uh, which is a hard thing to do in a horror movie. Although she does, when it counts things, she does get intense. Like the heavy breathing thing, wherever she takes out her gun. Yeah. Like you get, you get a sense that she's like not emotionless. She's just very stoic, but I know what you're saying. I just couldn't picture anyone actually hiring her for that job. Right. Because like I, you know, a cab and all that, but you do have to have some kind of people skills to work for the FBI. Right. And well, she did not have them. They kind of explain it. I want to start by saying, I really, I really enjoyed this movie. I, I, this movie was a blast. I had a blast watching this movie. I, I really Ew. enjoyed it. It really clicked with me. Um, it was scary. I thought it was, it, it brought out the Oz Perkins creepiness in yeah. the other films while being like more of a silence of the lambs with, and we're going to spoil the shit out of this for oh, the yeah. record yeah. with supernatural elements. And I love my, supernatural is my favorite type of horror movie. Hands down. Um, but my second favorite is like creepy serial killer shit. And I'm like, well, this is both. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, yeah, I really like, liked the, I mean, I'm jumping way ahead, but there's a fine. twist at the end involving the, do, the creepy dolls. And yeah. I liked it a whole lot, but I felt like they introduced it too late. So I, I know what you mean. My, I only have one critique about this film and it's a very small one. Um, but like the doll thing, what I was thinking about some of my favorite movies are the ones where they are premises of other movies told from a different perspective. So you don't realize it. Cause that's what this is. This is a creepy doll movie. Yeah. That's what it is. And, and the creepy doll movies tend to kind of suck. Like I'm not a big fan of a, of a creepy doll movie. Right. Um, but when you tell, I thought when you tell the story from like the aftermath where you're not, where it's like, you don't, it's a mystery, right? right. Like for, for the record, the movie shows us Nicolas Cage as professor long legs very quickly. Yeah. Um, and he, he looks like if Gish era, Billy Corgan yes. died, but just they're, kept doing <laughs> entertainment, but was they're like doing yeah, decaying the whole time. They're doing a whole thing with him. Yeah. <laughs> he is in prosthetics and he just looks completely different. The moment I saw him, like my like they show him first from the like nose down. Yeah. Um and then he he they they kind of tease it where the first scene is this little girl like in this yard. And you think like this is probably the first murder or something, at least that's what I thought. And then he's being a real fucking creep and he like he like lurches down into the shot and it cuts away. And then and like, and when I first saw it, I was like, who is, who is that old lady? <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a woman yeah. at first too. And then I was like, Oh no, that's, that's Nick. Yeah. They cover him and shit. Um, and so it just, it starts from, he's almost like in another, if this was like another creepy doll movie, he would be like a side character. That's yeah. what it felt like because he, what we'd learn is that he's the doll maker. Right. And he is, I guess we'll just lay, should we lay it all out? Uh, yeah. I mean, one of the things I did like though, I did not see what the dolls ended up being. I didn't see that coming at all. Oh and yeah. I was really impressed with that because when I say they introduced them too late, you see them pretty early on when they shoot the one doll and it's got the metal thing in its head. Right. You don't and, think too much of it. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what that is. And I did not guess. Right. Yeah. It, so they, yeah, they, 
they roll it out. There are some things I predicted. Like, for example, there's a scene where her boss is like, come meet my family. And I'm like, well, this family's doomed. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> it, it's one of those things, like Seven, where it's like, why is Gwyneth Paltrow in this movie? <laughs> and then you're like, eh, I think I know why, maybe. Yeah. It's that vibe. So it um the the premise is that she's she's a psychic. That was the first offer that was like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> she th- I think that's why they get away with the idea that she's like a little freak and the FBI is working with her because this is the X Files. It starts as the X Files. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, because it the first scene is basically or the first scene with her is her she just they're hunting a different serial killer and she just knows what house he's in. Um, right. And she's right. And then we learn that the FBI like has already has tests for psychics. Uh, Which I bet is do, true. It's straight up Mulder is in the other room doing this shit. Um, <laughs> it is straight up like, oh, we already have a division where we're like, and so they, she, they sit her down with the, the, the boss. Um, and he's just like, so you're a little psychic, huh? Like, <laughs> and they're not, shocked by that right which is weird because the implication later is that it's a it's something given to her like there's a reason she's but they're not at all shocked by the fact that she's a psychic yeah which implies psychics are just a thing in the fbi at least in this movie universe but i don't know i wouldn't be surprised if it you know if it's a thing that really exists the government will have figured out how to harness it in some right. way. The weirdest thing about this revelation is I didn't find this stupid. Like I, I was watching and I'm like, okay, like the, like they, he starts with the least believable part um, or like the most magic. And he, he gives us time to like deal with it and accept it. And the, the, her boss is like not quite buying it and she's not fully psychic. Like she only half passes the test. Yeah, that part was interesting. Yeah. So you know there's like she's not she's not like all knowing. You know, you know like okay, she's not going to be able to like solve this case. She'll get vibes. Yeah. She still just seems like someone who in real life would be more of a consultant and not someone yes. you give a gun to, but Yes. And by, I mean, there's this idea that like by staggering coincidence, she's directly involved in this case, we learn. Right. Um, but like you, I don't know. There's a lot of things at work. Spoilers. Satan is involved. So it's like you could argue that maybe these, these things are falling into place because they're being willed to, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I remember thinking right away in this movie, like, okay, we know it's Nicolas Cage. They've established... They, they are not hiding that fact and they know as soon as we see them. So like you, I don't know about you. Like I was wondering like, what is the mystery then? And like they they well, do start with this offer with the families. I think the mystery, they say it when they're first talking about him or one of the first crimes they're talking about. They mention that the whole family was slaughtered, but then they're like, but But there's no sign he was ever in the house. Yeah. They're saying there's a series of murders over like the course of 30 years. Right. And and they're like, in every case, the, 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 someone in the family, usually the dad, I think always the dad kills the rest of the family and then kills himself. And then we find these notes. So they're like, technically it's murder suicides, but we know it's a murder. And yeah, the mystery is how, how is he doing this? Yeah. And I mean, that's what the dolls eventually answer. Yes. That's the that's what was so fun about this is at first I was trying to think like is this going to be a seven situation and they're thinking the same thing they're like is he compelling them somehow right is he forcing them to do this um, and it turns out it has this huge lore behind it that they don't really give us too much of it they only give us enough my one critique is that there's two scenes where they explain it which was weird to me. Yeah. Where they do a montage with the mom being like, this is what I did. And then they show it again. And I was like, that feels like a producer note where they were like, we want to make absolutely sure (laughs) that the audience knows what's going on. Right. Which probably not the worst choice. I I wasn't distracted by it. I wasn't either. I just like, that was the only time it took me out a little bit where I was like, oh, you wanted to make sure I absolutely knew. And 
for the record, I want to make sure I'm absolutely new because I it needed a satisfying ending, right? It needed yeah. to. So, a lot of this film is her, and like right away, he goes and he breaks into her house and threatens her mom, and is just like, and it's clear like people keep telling her like, "Oh, your birthday's coming up," and we learn that he kills these little girls or they kills the family around the birthdays of the little girls. Right. So there's this clear like, okay, well, then and she's going to be involved. Birthdays on the 14th specifically. Right. Yes. Um, and then the murders are around the birthdays. Right. right? Not always on. Yeah. And it, it's all this coded shit. There's all this Zodiac ass shit going on. Yeah. That I did like the part where she, sits down with one of his ciphers and just figures it out yeah. immediately. Which is always fun. They're not hard. Like, I don't know. Did you ever do cryptograms on the newspaper? Yeah. Yeah. They're not hard. They it's, put out, they put out like, like things on Twitter and they're very solvable. It's very funny. Yeah. Which raises the question. Why couldn't they solve this one? Because yeah, you yeah. do have kind of, everything you need unless he's got some kind of system where some one symbol can mean two different letters. I don't know. It's, it, I mean, with a cryptogram, it's the, the, the more weird their, their message is probably the harder it is because it's like, okay, you look for, you look for doubles, right? Yeah. You start with doubles and you go, okay, those are O's, E's or L's because those are the only things that double up. And then you look for three letter words and you go like, okay, that's probably and or the. Yeah. And if you see those three letter words repeating a lot, you're like, well, yeah, that's definitely going to be the or and. And you start playing around and like doing versions until you get one where it starts clicking. Yeah, it's, they're not hard. I don't know why. It, the Zo even the Zodiac wasn't hard, right? People solved that. They like put in the yeah, paper. They they figured it out eventually. Yeah. Just break out your decoder ring. I and like a serial killer that leaves a game. Like it gives me something to an activity to do in bed before I go to sleep. Yeah. I mean it's you know, it's it's like virtual marketing. Like marketing in the real world. I forget what we called that back when no. it was a thing like when Trent Reznor was leaving USB drives of his new albums in right. bathrooms and shit. Right. It's like, ooh, there's an exciting new serial killer. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's fun. It's good promo. Good yeah, promotion. it's like a Batman villain. Yeah. It's like, it's a specific Batman villain, I guess, but yeah. it's, yeah. The one yeah, who <laughs> builds devil dolls. Yeah. I like, it's an interactive serial killer. I want a serial killer to leave, like, activities books all the time. Um, yeah, because it's going to make the work more interesting, because otherwise you're just trying to solve the crime, and that's all grisly details and things you want. Yeah. You want some busy work also. Has a brain there been a, teaser. Break up has, the time. Has there been a sketch where like serial killers are leaving like really easy puzzles? Like, can you spot five differences in these two pictures? <laughs> like like friendlies placement puzzles. Yeah. I want that so bad. Yeah. Please just focus on that and not yeah. the crime. <laughs> serial killer gets too involved in the puzzles <laughs> uh, just starts forgetting to kill people <laughs> i want that um so yeah there, i mean there's a lot in this and that's what it is is like like you, you just assume you're watching like a silence of the lambs zodiac type thing and then it's like surprise it's a haunted doll movie which yeah. again i can't stress enough how little I care for that genre. And it's like, you tricked me into liking a haunted doll movie. God damn it. Yeah. I'm not mad at a haunted doll movie. There's some good ones out there, but yeah. Yeah. I did not think that's what this movie was ultimately going to be from right. all of the trailers and promotion for it. My, my issue with haunted doll is that it feels easy because it's like, ooh, here we made this doll look creepy. And then we're like, yeah, you did. <laughs> you sure yeah. did. Yeah, and the thing also is no one would ever buy that doll for their child. That's where the Poltergeist remake blew it. They made the clown scary. Right. The clown like, wasn't supposed to be scary. The clown just looks like a clown. That's what made it scary. I would argue that's what I think uh, rubbed me the wrong way with the It remake, too. Where yeah. I get the it remake is going for a different thing, but it's like, 
no, start with something that looks like a clown that you'd have at a birthday party and make me scared of it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's like the fucking smile. I don't know. That new smile ad. Uh, did you see that before this movie? I did. Where they do the jump scare where it's like, wouldn't it, uh, do you ever think of how it's scary if a guy ran at you screaming? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's, man, such subtle horror. Have a guy <laughs> run at you screaming at the top of his lungs. Yeah, I did like Smile, but I feel like it's going to yeah. be a thing where they should have stopped there. Yeah, I just, Smile to me is, it's the most, it's like the nun for me where it's like, this is as as unsubtle as horror gets. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's like, you ever think about how smiling is creepy? And I'm like, yeah, I have. <laughs> and they stole that scene from Atorados. I didn't like that. So. Oh, they stole a lot from a lot of things in that first <laughs> smile. They're literally, I wrote a list when I saw that. Like I sat and I was like, okay, well, that's from The Ring. Mm. That's from It Follows. That's from uh, fucking Terrified. Like, it's just like they all, I don't know. Yeah. We're not talking about smile. We're talking about long legs. I really like how this was shot, by the way. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. And also, he kept doing these wides that made you uncomfortable. <clears throat> because there was this feeling for a lot of the film, especially the beginning, where you're not quite sure what it's going to be yet. So, like, Micah Moreau's character lives in, like, this fucking Twin Peaks-esque cabin house. Um, yeah. And, like... She's sitting there going through, and it, it is setting up a scene where someone breaks into her house, but it's it's these wide shots, and you can like see all the way through to her kitchen in the background, and yeah. you're like, my eyes were like glued on that, where I'm like, okay, what the fuck is going to show up in the background? And to its credit, it never actually does that when he sneaks into her house. It's it's you know she kind of gets a spider sense every now and then that like yeah. pings her. Well, no, at one point she sees him in she think, does. one of those wide shots, just like, and you also see him kind of from her perspective and right. it is, yeah, it is done in a really interesting way. Well, that's what they keep doing is like, they give you a lot of those wide shots and they don't telegraph it because that's just how the movie is shot. So, uh, there's a lot of slow pans and stuff too. So like the one that got me was later the mom when, um, I think we said it. Her mom ends up being an accomplice um, yeah. of Professor Longlegs. The idea is that he so I uh, so the idea is that he makes these dolls with the devil, and he has these like orbs in them, and I I the orbs appear to have some sort of demonic. Um, the orbs are a little piece of the devil. It's yes. what it's what the devil needs to do his work inside that house, like a yeah. controller kind of, and like. I sort of knew they were going to be, I mean, they do the scene where they like basically find the doll early and they do a doll autopsy and the guy is like, yeah. something's w fucking wrong with this orb. <laughs> like yeah. I listened to it and I could have sworn I, it was saying my ex-wife's name over <laughs> and over again. And you're like, okay, two things. One, you're, you, you have a problem, sir. Uh, <laughs> and two, that orb is haunted as shit. So it's like not a haunted doll. It's a haunted orb put in right. a doll. And, the if we're just explaining it to people yeah what her mom's role end up, ends up being is they have to get these dolls in to the person's house or right. it's not going to work and nicolas cage looks like nicolas cage <laughs> so he can't show up at the door and be like a gift from the church yeah it's so funny because i feel like the devil was like sitting in his office and he's like, God damn it. Why couldn't I've just found a doll maker who was charming. Yeah. And it's like, I like, cause Nicholas cage, he, again, he, they use every part of the Nicholas cage. So he like sings at one point, he does like the Nicholas cage screaming and it's like, they play it for horror. And it's funny. You forget how terrifying of a man he can be. We're all yeah. just used to him. So like they have a few scenes where like, he goes to buy something at the hardware store and this teenage girl is just like, this fucking creeps here again, dad. <laughs> Cause yeah. he's like covering his eyes and going like cuckoo, cuckoo at her and like, when's your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dad, there's a serial killer here. 
Yeah, it looked like how Michael Jackson probably interacted with kids. <laughs> it was just aggressively creepy. Yeah, he is just uh, he. Yeah, it's like I don't know. It's perfect. It's it's like it's his downfall as a serial killer. He's like, I want to I want to be a serial killer for Satan. But like I, they won't let me close to them because <laughs> everybody sees me from afar and they go like, OK, everybody grab your kids immediately. Yeah, that is a child murderer. Yeah. If he showed up at your door with a gift from the church. Yeah. You're not you're not letting that guy in. And so they say, yeah, the FBI keeps saying they're like, he has to have an accomplice um, because like they I th- th- they figure out that the doll, everybody got a doll. They start figuring that out. Right. Right. Because, they, yeah, they find a doll at every scene. Right. D- did you see her mom being the accomplice? Did you see that part coming? I did not. I, I they did not. Hid that I really thought well. She was, yeah. So like, well, they, they double it up. And what I mean is like, you know that she's involved, right? Right. You know, you know, like, okay, she was one like, and they reveal like when she was a kid, a stranger came to her house. And so I thought her mom was just going to be an exposition machine. And we were doing kind of yeah. a silence of the lambs thing where she has a weird fucked up mom. Um, because it was like, okay, if we're going to have exposition, we might as well make it creepy and weird. So yeah. It was a really good idea so that when she she goes to her mom's house once to like ask her some questions and her mom's a weird hoarder. Um, and then when she goes the second time, I assumed her mom was going to be dead or something. Yeah. And there's a line. They So this is another big thing. They catch long legs like pretty early, like before the third act. Right. And spoilers, he super duper dies. He he dies in dramatic fashion. Yeah. He says, hail Satan. And then he slams his head on the desk so many times that it kills him. Could she have gotten up and like dragged the table away when she backed up? You know, when they came in, they're like, you didn't help at all. <laughs> that yeah, shouldn't she, have happened. She just watches. And it's like, yeah. you're not handcuffed. You could grab him or something. Yeah. There's an implication, and that, that's the moment you realize it kind of where, because there's a, a, a one survivor of the past, and she's in a mental institution. She gets, she gets visited by Dr. Longlegs, and, he, um, and we don't know what he said to her. And then we learn that she killed herself later. And she says, like, when they talk to her, that she would do anything for him. Right. And there's this implication that, like, she's a puppet. And the family is our puppets. And I think when Nicolas Cage kills himself you realize oh he's also a puppet isn't he like there is a bigger thing and like at that point they've thrown like it's a slow burn of realizing like this is gonna be supernatural isn't it yeah Um, because you're not sure for the longest time and the girl who played the survivor is in black coat's daughter also okay which one is because i know don draper's uh don draper's daughter is in the black coat's daughter but it, it didn't ping me as her. Um, what What's her name? It's Carrie Ann. I, I think I see her. I recognize the last name. Yeah, she, she is. It's Sally Draper. Holy shit. I did not recognize her. Yeah. Yeah. What is her name in real life? God damn it. Uh, K- Kiernan Shipka. Yeah. 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 That's her. Yeah. She looks different, obviously, because, you know, Black Coat's daughter was 2015. Don Draper or Sally Draper was a while ago. She was great. She's I. Holy shit. I am just learning something that's blowing my mind. Let's hear it. She's also in Twisters. Oh, Oh, I'm so excited for Twisters. Is that also Oz Perkins? That would be great. That would be amazing. (laughs) Slow burn tornado where you're watching and they're like, what will happen? And I'm like, I think a tornado will happen. <laughs> Pretty sure that's what's going to fucking happen. It's going a mile and a half an hour. Yeah. So she's having a, she's having a fun summer being in twisters and long legs. Like that's the full yeah. spectrum of movie awesomeness to me. Yeah. Um, I almost missed her. I had to piss and oh no, I, I went during that moment and came back right near the end of that scene and was like, Oh shit. Her. Oh, okay. Yeah. All you need to know is that, 
he signed in with her name with Micah Monroe's name in her her agent's oh, name. Oh, okay. There's a there's a fun moment um, because uh, that's the other thing about this movie. It does it does have like a few moments of comedy. Um, yeah, and like the audience I was watching was having fun with the whole like oh fuck that moments too, where people are just like Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, but there's a moment where they go they go into the institution and they're like did you see his face? The man who visited her, the guy's like, no, no, I wasn't here. And they're like, Oh, okay. Did you have a sign in book? And they're like, yeah, here it is. And it's the agent Lee Harker's name. And so it's her, it's Micah Monroe's name. And then they go like, do you check IDs at the door? And he goes, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, Oh, that's a funny idea. Cause it, this yeah. takes place in the nineties where it's like, yeah, I was just going to say this takes place. Do they ever like, populate the year on screen because they actually, I feel like they do a really good job of letting you know it's happening in the nineties, but it doesn't look dated they, unless you see like the cars yeah. or the universal symbol that something is happening in the past smoking at work. Yes. That's how but you they, know it's the nineties or earlier. I, the cars were the first thing where I was like, is this the seventies? And then some of the cars look more modern. I was like, it's not the 70s. And they do the X-Files tactic, actually, which is at the FBI. This is apparently a thing at the FBI, which weirds me out. That's right. They have a picture of the president. And so it's like, you just see picture of Bill Clinton in the background. You're like, got it. Yeah. I know yeah. exactly when it takes place. Yeah. Bill Clinton is in this. Yeah. He, he I'm is sure he has an IMDb in credit. <laughs> He's in it a lot. He keeps showing up. Yeah. Just that same picture of Bill Clinton staring at you, smiling, wanting to take your shirt off. <laughs> it would be great chest. if they kept doing stuff like being like, what do you think about this OJ guy? <laughs> Can you yeah. believe it? It um, I do think this was loosely inspired by the X-Files because it has like the, the FBI in this is very creepy. Yeah. In a way that it's like, and I, I think Silence of the Lambs obviously is a big one. Um, she's very much kind of a Clarice where I mentioned at the beginning, like they do this thing where the first serial killer she catches. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a great moment. It's, this is also something I, for some reason saw coming, but like she's with this partner who's like this swarmy guy and she's like serial killers in that house. And he's like, how do you know? And she's like, I don't know, man. And he's like, all right, <laughs> I'll check it out. You stay behind, little lady. And he knocks the door like, hey, FBI. And then just blam. <laughs> shot, shot in the, in the face. Head. You're like, well, I guess we're done with that guy. But yeah. she whips out her gun and, and it, the house is as creepy as possible. It's being painted or renovated. So it's all like draped plastic. And you just hear her breathing. Yeah. And, and that's how they show like, oh, she might act like she's stone cold. But the moment shit happens she's having a panic attack um yeah. which was i thought a good way of doing it does she have a character arc her arc is kind of just this is look how fucked up this all is yeah learning I've, about her trauma i guess yeah that i kind of found her distracting at well times because of that were, she's just kind of no matter the situation like even when she's talking to that kid in her bedroom She's just so tense and on oh, yeah. edge. And it's like, why does this kid even want to talk to her? She's like a Wes Anderson character. Yeah. Um, and But like they explain why that scene is weirdly twee because people were laughing in that scene where the little girl is like, basically what happens, she goes to her, her Blair Underwood, her boss's house, and he is like, come on inside, meet my wife and kids. And he's funny in it. And yeah. she goes do I have to, sir? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes in and you get the impression that it's like, she's just doesn't vibe with people. Yeah. And then the little girl is like, come in uh, my room. And she's like, okay. And she's like, clearly very reluctant and like weird. And then the girl is like, will you come to my birthday party? That's when I was like, oh, this family is dead. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And she goes, okay, I'll be there or whatever. And so you get this vibe that there's something wrong with Micah Monroe. And there is because what we're learning is that she's kind of what this doll does, what we see. They, sh I really like that. They show what happens. 
Yeah. Um, because the first thing is she goes to her mom's house and it's like, I, like I said, I thought she was going to be dead or we'd get one little bit of exposition. There is a line when she catches Mr. Longlegs and they're in the office and she says, where is he? And they say, she's right. He's right under you. Yeah. Which is a hint to the fact that he's been staying in her fucking mom's basement. So like, he's literally, that, that was great. Like the first yeah. time she visits her mom, he is right under her and she doesn't know. I loved that. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. But you show, you show up and you're like, Oh, she's going to find her dead mom or something. Um, or again, that's what I thought. And the other agents waiting in the car and they, they do the thing where you're, there's this expansive shot of the background and I, she blended in and she's there right. standing there holding the fucking <laughs> shotgun. And you're like, Oh fuck. Holding the shotgun. And it first, is that when we first see the dolls? I think it is right. It might be. I don't know. This is where she shoots the other agent twice with a shotgun. And I was like, one is enough, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, no. So, or wait, yeah, that is when, and next she goes out, she shoots the agent, and then she goes and is holding the gun on the doll, right? No, that's later. That's when, no, that's when he's killing his family, right? I'm saying when the mom shoots the agent outside. Yeah. I don't think she sees the, oh, you're right, you're right. You're yeah, right. She She's goes, holding the gun on the dog. I was thinking of a different part. Because she watches her shoot the agent from inside the house. Yeah. And then I, goes outside. And when she gets outside, mom is holding the shotgun on what appears to be a little kid at first. Right. And then they close in on it. And you're like, oh, it's worse. It's a doll. That's yeah. creepier. <laughs> That's weirdly worse. I wish it was <laughs> yeah. a child. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And what we learn is basically the mom, uh, yeah, made a deal with long legs and like she has to do this unless uh, for her soul. And like what we learn is, yeah, this is, this is Micah Monroe's doll. She has a doll. And what you see is that the doll like seems to hypnotize these girls in a weird way. So she is essentially like in this state of hypnosis, I think. Yeah. That's why like when she shoots, the mom shoots her doll. And you see this like black fuzz come out of it, uh, a little bit of Satan, and something happens to Micah Monroe. She seems like she gets a black fuzz around her head. Yeah. And then when she's driving, for many reasons, but for one, I think she starts screaming. And I think the idea is like for the first time, she's out of that fog. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that's what you realize is this character isn't, she's not twee, she's not quirky. She's been in a state of like hypnosis for her whole life basically and didn't realize it yeah which i like i thought that was cool yeah i liked everything about that i just yeah. like everything about the dolls the way they worked the lore behind them i loved yeah. all of that i just wish it i i wish there was more of it i wish that was introduced earlier and i don't know yeah, yeah i guess i just wish it turned into a doll movie earlier it's hard, man, because I, I always think about this concept with movies, which is that I think a lot of movies tell the story from the least interesting perspective um, sometimes. Like, what I mean is that when you watch a disaster movie, they, it's always from the perspective of NASA and the scientists and the people saving the day. And I know the instinct to do that. Yeah. But you know what's more compelling is a person on the street who has no control over any of that just having to be told oh, we'll, we'll handle it. We're going to handle it. Having to watch TV. Like that's the more dramatic idea to yeah. me, which is like this person is on the sidelines and this thing is happening to around them. And that's what this felt like to me is like, a, I think a good mystery is like that. That's what I loved about the purge TV series, which Ooh. I think got canceled because of COVID. It was so good. I need to watch that. But because they were able to delve into that, universe more there's one whole episode that's just about the people who clean up after the oh that's great that's great and you yeah. would never see that in the movie and yeah. i don't know i like that that's fantastic and i think for horror movies it's like the less you know the scarier it tends to be although i, I always want an explanation so this feels like yeah. it just feels like she's like this type of character the little girl would be a side character in an evil doll movie that gets away. Like this feels like it's almost like 
after another horror movie happened, like the little girl has gr- grown up and yeah. it's like, what happened? It's like, you know, I, I guess, um, Dr. Sleep is kind of that where it's like Danny growing sure. up after the fact. Yeah. Maybe so they'll I, make this a franchise. Make this a fa- franchise. Maybe they will. Yeah. Long, longer legs, <laughs> longest, the legs. longest legs. Why is he called long legs? Did I miss that? I had a theory at one point. I, yeah, I would only have theories, but I, my theory was, um, because I was thinking about the X-Files and when he goes into that store to creep out that teenager, I believe it's a paint shop Mm -hmm. and there's an X-Files episode where killer is a painter and he wears stilts and I was Mm. like, Oh, long legs. And I still think maybe that's it. I thought maybe it's implying that even though he's up here, he's kind of always in hell also. Yeah. So he's like walking in hell, but living up here, which if he's hypnotized also, maybe it's, yeah, that could be it. The one thing we don't quite know though, is like, how does he find, cause he's the one also finding them. Is Satan just telling him that's probably it. Yeah. It, I, I am surprised Satan has all of these logistical problems up here it seems like he's got a whole lot of powers and he should be yeah. able to work around things like this but it, that it's would make for a less interesting doing. movie yeah yeah i mean i i really liked satan in this and what i mean by yeah. that is like flashes of red when the dolls like are in these veil veils and like you can see these like satanic faces before they're it's it, that was cool yeah um and just the way Satan is depicted is neat in this. Yes. He's just a dude sitting. He's like the cuck watching yeah. someone bang his girlfriend. He's just sitting there off to the side, very creepy. Like That's honestly my favorite depictions of Satan. Like in The Omen where Satan's like, it's Final Destination. He's just sort of a, a force. Yeah. And in this, it's very similar where it's like Satan isn't really there. He's just sort of working through these people and... and and Nicolas Cage being <laughs> just, I feel like we didn't talk enough about what he's up to in this. He's very, very Nicolas Cage in this. Yes. It's, it's aggressive. I'm I, imagining Nicolas Cage at his house with a sledgehammer, breaking open the, uh, the basement uh, floor and unearthing cocaine. <laughs> I'm like, hello, old friend. One last ride. You and me. Because he is just going, again, it's... it's, And he is powder white. Yes, he is. That is all <laughs> cocaine on him. And big T-Rex fan, which I think would also speak to also being a fan <laughs> yeah. of cocaine. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there's a lot of like 70s dirtbag music in this. Yeah. I mean, I love T-Rex. I was psyched. Yeah. I did not know T-Rex was going to be such an, <laughs> be an integral element. part of this, but I was into that. It's serial killer music. It's yeah, just yeah. like Donovan, like that shit serial killer music. Yeah. It's just absolutely. what it is. Um, Yeah. I mean, this definitely has, it's weird because it takes place in the nineties, but it, it knows that it needs to kind of invoke that because it is, the idea is it's a Zodiac. Like he's been a killer since the seventies. Um, yeah. So it's like invoking all those vibes all at once. But then also, yeah, like it's invoking the Satanism stuff. That's part of it where it's like, it's the nineties. So like the FBI are sitting around like, so Satanism, right? Like it's Satanists. Like that's a, that's a big problem right now. Right. Um, so it's kind of this like nice little mix of vibes that way. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean the nineties was that like, it was like, we're there's still like the remnants of the seventies, you know, the wood paneling and shit, the cars. Yeah. I feel like we were, sort of moving out of the satanic panic era by then, but yeah. not all the way. It was kind of like that period between when like the cold war ended and then for a while we didn't have any enemies. And then it was like, Oh yeah, but still Russia, right? Like the satanic panic, it was, there was the satanic panic. And then there was this like lull, where everyone was like, okay, well, that's actually what happened. And then yeah. we picked it back up and we're like, oh, no, that was crazy. And all those people should be let out of prison. Yeah. I think we, in that, 
that window we were like, I don't know, aliens? Like, I feel like <laughs> yeah. the 90s were kind of like, I don't know, is aliens fun? Um, honestly, aliens is more fun than satanic panic because at least with aliens, you're not putting any innocent kids in jail. Uh, hopefully not. Yeah. It would have been wild if this ended up being an alien movie. It could have been. alien. Yeah. So creepy aliens is a thing that I wish we did more of. And what I mean by that is like aliens are scary if you let them be. Yeah. Because they're like poltergeists. Like it, like the X-Files was always good at this where it's like because the X-Files never wanted to show an alien, they were always kind of like a presence um, that was a lot more scary. This could have been aliens easily. Yeah. 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 Because it's mind control. Basically. Yeah. This could have been the government. That would have been yeah. cool too. <laughs> And so, like, I don't know. Yeah, this sort of... Yeah, because you're right. It's Satanist mind control. That's ultimately what it is through d- haunted dolls. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, if they had introduced a doll immediately, if the trailers were like the dolls or something like that, it just would have been a bad movie. It was just like so well written in the sense that they took a story that is somewhat familiar and you just kind of tell it backwards in a way where you're like... You, you tell it in this order where... It, you let it kind of unfold and you pick a character where you're like, what character would that unfold to like that? Yeah. And a uh, FBI agent who's seemingly on the sidelines is perfect. The fact that she's involved never crossed my mind only because I thought they were doing a silence of the lambs type. I mean, I guess it did eventually once like that first flashback in retrospect. It's like, of course that was her. Right. Um, but I don't know. I, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly when I realized that. I don't know. I, I really liked how all the little revelations unfolded. And then we t- talk about the ending with Blair Underwood where she sits down. The The revelation is like, she, oh, yeah, she gets a phone call from Satan. Yes. I forgot. Satan calls her. <laughs> because I that's very funny to me because he's like intricate puppet master. And then he's watching. And he's like, shit, she's not going to go to that house, is she? Ah, okay. I'm going to call yeah. her. Fuck. Which that like, feels yeah. like that feels like cheating. But. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I really think like it didn't quite go the way he thought. And he's like, ah, crap. There's no one. There's like, it's like, it's like you're trying to do a surprise for somebody. Yeah. And they're not like walking in the room. So you have to be like, just go in that room. Just go in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause Please. she had every reason to have forgotten about this kid's birthday party. Yeah. She had a very good excuse. <laughs> she had had quite a day up to that point. So Satan, not the greatest planner, it seems. Because, yeah, this plan wasn't working. Yeah. So, yeah, her mom gets away, basically, after shooting the agent. And, oh, yeah, because when it shoots her, she passes out. And she wakes up in the basement. And that's how we know, oh, Long Legs was living down there. She got a Long Legs down there. Yeah. Is that why? Because Daddy Long Legs are always in the basement? I guess that could be. I don't know. Um, And so she drives to the birthday party and, like... There and there and the her mom is already there. The doll is already there, and Blair Underwood and his wife are just chilling. And you get to see kind of what the mind control looks like, where he's like weirdly hostile. It's also kind of funny because they're sitting and she goes, "Sir, that's my mom. She's working with the killer." And he's like, "Shut up and sit down." <laughs> and then they're like, "The mom is like, we need to put, get cake. We need something to cut it with." And he like gets mad at her. And then he's like, all right, there's a knife in the kitchen. And you're like, ah, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really weird exchange where she says, we need to cut the cake. And he goes, all right, I'll go get knives to cut up the cake. And she goes, do you have to? Yes. Because she, you can see at one point she almost cries because she's under this mind control, but she's also like somewhere inside of her. She's there. Yeah. And then, yeah. And he's like, it was your fucking suggestion. And then he's like, we'll go to the kitchen. And she goes, we'll be back. And he's like, well, I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a, it's a comedic moment. And then uh, you hear him stabbing her to death. It's very seven where you're like, oh, this isn't going to end well for anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And then she shoots him because he's going to kill his daughter. And then she has to shoot her own mom. Right. And then she shoots the doll. Oh, no. She tries to shoot the doll and she's out of bullets. <laughs> and the little girl is just there, like still into the doll because she's she's, and then it's just Nicholas Cage laughing, and he goes, "Hail Satan!" <laughs> the credits. 
Any, yeah. Anyone who is listening to this without having seen the movie, yeah. I'm just relishing the Sounds thought like madness of not just that, but you like when you said she shoots the doll at first you went, she shoots the, d- I guarantee there's people who are going to be like, oh, she shoots the daughter. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a turn. She shoots it, the kid and carries the doll out. This also like, this sounds like me describing it. It sounds like it could be a bad movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> like what I'm describing is doesn't sound scary. And, and it it's very like the scary parts are all in the execution and then yeah. this ending is like it ends with like it ends with like an upbeat song because it knows that the entire audience I was in just went like Jesus Christ and like got up because they know it it ends in a way that's like disturbing but not like <sighs> she manages to save the little girl and you're kind of already in the headspace where you're like honestly I thought more people would die like on yeah. like at this point I'm happy that one person lives. So it's almost a happy ending because the movie is so bleak up to that point. And it's so cruel in a way that's kind of fun that like, it's not like seven, you know, at the ending of seven, you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wonder if there will be any more of these movies. I feel like there's room for it. You think so? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for one thing, that doll didn't get shot at the end, although I, I assume think, the next movie would just start with someone else showing up with a different gun and yeah, capping that doll. Oh, I assume she'll go reload. She's like, I got bullets in the car or yeah. something. <laughs> or like when the FBI shows up, she's like, I'm going to need somebody's gun. And they're like, why did you? That was evidence. She's like, trust me. It's good. This is good. But also, wouldn't you want to study that thing? Yeah. Get I that would. in a lab it's somewhere. in it. Oh, yeah. I feel like she's got to go to the FBI and be like, so <laughs> I have a lot to explain. I need to talk to Agent Fox Mulder. He's got to be around <laughs> here somewhere. But that's the implica- the implication with the FBI is that they will believe her because they seem to have a paranormal division. They seem to have a psychic test that yeah. they do. And so it's like, all right, clearly. Have you watched, have you watched Evil? No, but I need to. It sounds... It's Catholic X Files. They could also just team her up with Luke Cage. Okay, and yeah, they could solve it that way. It's it is very literally Catholic X Files. Yeah, it's good, man. I will, I will definitely. I've been meaning to check that out because there's a new season, and I've heard nothing but good things. Where it's like, yeah, it sounds exactly like my jam. Yeah, it's yeah, really good. And this again, this was my jam because it's got all the things. It's got the X Files vibe. I, I literally like how, cause I don't find serial killer shit scary. And that the moment I realized, Oh, it's not just that it's Satan. And like, even before that, like the first part where he, um, like re- when she looks at the picture, she goes through her mom's house and oh, finds yeah. the Polaroid she took of, of, of Dr. Long legs. And like you, the, you, you keep seeing this memory and you realize like, Oh, she was holding a camera and they do like a jump scare of the memory of him, like right. Bending down. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it moved a little slow. I, I found the lead actor a little distracting, but actually talking about it more, I guess it makes sense why she would have the job I, she had. I think this, I'm excited to watch this again. Yeah. I, I will probably watch this again. Yeah, because I think there'll be a lot more that I missed. I literally just watched it. I just came from the theater. Yeah. So, like, my mind is jumbled thinking about it. I haven't had time. Yeah, but I, I watched it yesterday morning, and then right. I've worked a bunch, and now yeah. just thinking but about it again fresh. Yeah. I, I definitely, tried taking I can't notes. Wait. I tried taking notes in the theater. Oh, I stopped doing that. Yeah, I. there were people behind me, so I yep. couldn't. All I got was T-Rex, oh shit, that's Nick Cage, and Blair Underwood. Yep. If that does yeah. anything for the episode. You can you can turn down your thing really low, but it's still rude. Yeah. I've only do the only movies that I do notes for that are in theaters are really bad ones because I'm the only one in the theater. Yeah. And I'm so bored that I'm taking notes because I have nothing else to do. This is one of those movies where like even if I could take notes, I'd forget. I, yeah. I, it's just like I was into it. Yeah, I 
saw this at an AMC and I don't normally go to AMC cause I have a terrace cinemas by nice. me and there's always like four or five people in the theater there. So I could have taken notes if I saw it there, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, it's better to just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy the ride. I'm very excited about horror right now. Cause cuckoo, uh, uh, the fucking Hugh Grant, evil Hugh Grant. Did you see that trailer? Yeah. Heretic. It's ah, uh, great use of Hugh Grant. Yeah. Are you excited to see trap at all? Yes, I am. Too. I am. I really am. I, he sold me. I'm like, this seems like a lot of fun. Yeah. And I feel like he has been experiencing a bit of a renaissance over the last few years. I feel like ever since the visit, yeah. Shyamalan's been mostly fine. Oh yeah. I mean, he, I, I, like I said, uh, I mean, old was very silly, but I'm never yeah. bored in a Shyamalan film. So no, and that's fine. Have you me. watched servant yet? No, servant's need really to? good. It's really good. All right. I'll watch it. I have not heard that it was good. I've heard the opposite, uh, mm. but I, uh, that's cause it, Shyamalan is like limp biscuit at this point. Like there's nothing he's going to do yeah. that is going to change most people's minds. It's like a new, like that. a new corn album. Corn secretly makes really great, great albums, but I wouldn't know. I haven't listened to any corn. Corn unplugged is, I'd say, the third best MTV unplugged. Please tell. Okay, I, I want that to be an album, and all you hear is like the slapping of electric guitars, <laughs> and then like, God damn it, fuck, man, can no, we plug it? No, we can't plug in. All right, fuck. corn unplugged is really good it's shockingly good all right anything else to say about long legs uh just that i wish t-rex was corn in this how <laughs> how much crazier would it have been <laughs> i want this, a serial killer movie in the 2000s where they listen this, to new metal or the soundtrack is just like early corn like life is peachy era uh, corn because that was 90s close enough oh my god you know what oz perkins next thing is i do not a adaptation of Stephen King's The Monkey. Um, oh, which wow. I don't, which is about what? An evil toy monkey, right? <laughs> evil monkey, I guess. If anybody can do it, it's Oz Perkins. That's what I'm learning is, again, like what I hate about the evil doll genre is I think what I also hate about the evil doll genre is that it should be, if it works, I like it. And what I mean by that is like making you scared of an object yeah. It's one of the dumbest things, but they always make it look like, oh, I'm Annabelle, I'm creepy. And I'm like, well, yeah, no one fucking, it's creepy. Like, yeah. make it the original Raggedy Ann doll. Make it, right. make it like an unsuspecting object that you then make terrifying. And like, to his credit in this, the dolls in this are scary, but they're not trying to be scary. Yeah. Um, th they're dolls that it, you would you could like give to a child and the child go, Oh, this is so neat. You know? Yeah. It looks um, like those real dolls, but yeah. Kids. Like the porcelain. Uh, my mom collected dolls that were similar to these and it's a haunting fact about <laughs> my mom. <laughs> and that is uh, haunting. They were very haunting, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it just Oz Perkins so far. I, I really like, I don't know. I, I, I liked his vibe before, but for me, this is like when it all came together for me, which I was like, this is all the things I like. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to rewatch this. I didn't hate it. I felt like it moved like all of his movies move pretty slow, but yeah, this one. And I was also pretty tired watching this, what it, which so what it is for me is like the black coat daughter or I'm the pretty thing that lived in the house. That one moved too slow for me because a lot of that is like, <laughs> just in a fucking house yeah um i think with this one i was getting that silence of the lambs where i was like sort of like living in it and i liked the i really liked the sets and the lighting so it felt like really comforting to be in it and so and the detective shit the mystery shit i think should be a slow burn right where yeah. once you realize okay we know it's nicholas cage we just don't know how he's doing it that's a very fun offer so yeah. I really liked existing in this film. Yeah. I like the 
concepts Oz Perkins comes up with. I love the way the dolls worked in this and yeah. like the whole setup behind it. And the Black Coat's daughter, just the idea of, oh, well, this person was possessed by Satan at one point. And surprise, she misses him. Like that, yeah. like that was such a fascinating twist. It's a good on idea. That kind of movie for me. And I fucking loved it. I don't, I remember liking I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House, but I don't remember that movie as well. I need to rewatch that one. But The Black Coast Go- Daughter, I'm glad you pointed that out because that's another one where you're like, that is the story kind of told in a different way. Yeah. Oh, shit. And I forgot about Gretel and Hansel. Did you see that? I did not, but I did see an article like pitching it because Long Legs is coming out and they're like, you need to watch Gretel and Hansel. It is pretty fucking grisly. Um, And that's one, again, where they're like, okay, let's tell this story, but like, let's fucking tell it. Let's make it terrifying. Yeah. Uh, And it is. And it's really grotesque and creepy. Um, And so, I don't know. Oz Perkins, man. Oz fucking Perkins. Yeah, I'm I'm really liking it and God damn. I yeah, I, I really liked this one. Um Yeah, I'll see it again. I, I, like I said, it's it's not necessarily it's also just my jam. So it's like yeah. you know, not everybody will like it necessarily as much as me. Yeah. Yeah, it does feel a lot like haunted X Files. That's yeah for sure. And Nicolas Cage what a swing that could have gone so wrong. <laughs> yeah. That, that could have been laughable. Um, but he is, he is pretty fucking, he's pretty fucking he's, creepy in this. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's in his wheelhouse in this. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Thank cool. you so much. Thank you for talking about this with me. Uh, do you, do you want to tell the world anything? Um, because the world I mean, is listening, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I plugged everything up top. You can uh, check out you don't pod.supercast.com also to okay. listen to my other, get bonus episodes of all my other podcasts. All my podcasts are like everywhere. Yeah. Someone left a comment on my YouTube channel and was like, will you just put your podcast somewhere accessible? You mean like Spotify and iTunes and shit? You right. My podcast Ours- it's anywhere. We're on Spotify and we didn't even mean to be on Spotify. Spotify just takes it. They just go, this is ours now. Yeah. I'm all over Spotify for some reason. Um, yeah, that happens. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, if people want, they can go to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's for this network or gamefully unemployed.com link to our store there. We have exclusive podcasts on our Patreon as well. Check it out. You, you, you know, you know us. We watch movies every Friday night with our patrons. We just watched Independence Day and Independence Day Resurgence, two Ooh. classics, equally good classics, both equally good films. One of them has uh, Agent Longlegs from this. Oh, nice. Yeah, Monroe. And uh, yeah, look out for the, the long legs. Anybody with long legs. Yeah, this is shoot, your movie. Shoot on sight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's sad Tom couldn't be here for this because, boy, he's got some long legs. Tom Tom has some stems, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. He's got you know some what? gams. I'm kind of suspicious of him now. Should we kill Tom? Hmm. Let's, let's talk about this. On a, on a sep- like on a bonus podcast? Yeah, bonus podcast. For? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> pay wallet. Pay wallet. The <laughs> easiest, most solvable murder. <laughs> FBI like, well... <laughs> But we're not going to pay to listen. (laughs) Surely they'll release it for free someday. (laughs) Then we'll get them. Then we'll get them. (laughs) Hey, listen, our music is produced by Chris Corlew. You can find him on Twitter.com as the Corlew or go to shipwreckedsailor.bandcamp.com. Our channel artwork is produced by Michael Vincent Bramley. For more of his work, go to mvbramley.art. Our episode artwork is by Justin Brown, available on Twitter as Justin T. Brown 
or at artnessbyjustinbrown.com. And finally, additional artwork is by Starlene Hodge. You can find her work at starlinearts.com or on Twitter as Starlene X. Cool. Goodbye. <laughs>